Hello peeps, let's start with this Occupy thing. Occupy anti-capitalism protests spread around the world. So we all know that we've got Occupy here, there and everywhere. And I think it says to me anyway, what we've got here is people around the world in their great... Um, knowledge of the masses what is it where uh, you ask a great amount of people for an answer and plot it and generally the average is about right I think the the answer that they've got right here is that there is something wrong and that's as far as I'll obviously go with um, saying what they've got right they have understood that there is actually something wrong which is a an advancement it really is an advance on what most of the powers that be have understood okay now I'll run through a few things to um, explore this theme now this one is from Grant's interest rate observer and it's a bit out of date but it does give us an idea okay so down the left what we have are the great recessions or the recessions that we've had since the Great Depression. The United States of America this is. Well what the government did and didn't do. So highlighted in yellow is the top one, the Great Depression. Length for 44 months, uh, the start of it this is, August 29 to March, the th uh, March 1933. Now GDP dropped by 27%, absolutely horrible, but the stimulus was minimal. But it wasn't. If you see, if you go 3.4% and 4.9% in monetary and fiscal stimulus, and look your little eyes down the columns underneath, they are generally bigger numbers than anything that happened up until this Great Recession thing. There was a fiscal um, stimulus in 19 late 1948 which was bigger otherwise the great Dis depression stimuli were the biggest that ever was until now but look we had a gdp of minus three percent down at the bottom there uh, between december this uh, december 07 and june 09 only a drop of minus 3.3 percent but look at the stimulus that was thrown at it 18 percent monetary that percentage of GDP stimulus and 11.9, 12% fiscal of GDP stimulus, adding up to about 30% of GDP stimulus um, in those early months, those early 18 months of the Great Recession, 30% uh, stimulus. And uh, at Grants, they've added up all the stimulus ever since, all the business recessions since, plus the Great Depression, of the first part of it there anyway and only come to 39 it gives you two things I think it brings out first that the GDP wasn't down that much but a monstrous stimulus was thrown at it or we can say the GDP only went down that much because a huge stimulus was thrown at it but I don't think those are the sort of things that in from where I'm attacking this video we should be discussing the thing to be discussing is the stimulus was put in at 18 and 12 percent monetary and fiscal wildly absolutely wildly out of the norm nothing like this had ever happened before certainly in the lifetime of the people that were doing it okay that's what the take is that there is as the uh, Wall Street occupiers and occupy of here, there and everywhere are saying there is something wrong. There is something completely different about what is going on now. Yeah, yeah, okay. And, and I'll just throw in a couple of other little points. It's hard to make it in, in one coherent um, single point, so I'll, I'll just throw a couple in. A better retirement. This is again about the United States of America, and this is a modest proposal. Cancel all retirement plans. You can read the rest of the article for it. But the, the thing is, well, I'll read the first paragraph and see how we go. 
the US retirement system is a mess. It's grossly unfair in that employers can choose whether to offer retirement benefits or not, with employees not able to say much about it. Whole fields of employment may have defined pensions or their miserable cousin the 401k, or nothing, with little rhyme or reason. Workers unwittingly enter fields that either do or don't offer retirement benefits for all sorts of unrelated reasons of interest and talent. They end up working 40 years um, later, either made in the shade. I think that means, I've never come across the expression before, but I imagine what they, they retire and they're made in the shade, which must, must mean that they're um, very well off. Or dumpster diving means they're very badly off. We need a better way. And this is a good one to show that um, that higgledy-piggledy um, system in the United States is chronically stupid. And it's worked to a greater extent because of something in the past led such an arbitrary system to just about work but something has definitely gone wrong now and that system definitely in the future won't work. If you read the article he's actually saying that all of those um, you can choose or employers choose throw all that away and have one more so one social security one a bit more like they would in a European sort of thing. Everybody pays in and the government pays out evenly. It's all evened out. Now, that, again, I don't think is the argument. And I'll do another one, but I'll come back to... Oh, no, I'll, I'll talk about this, just in case I forget. Because the, the, I, it might seem as though I knock the United States quite a lot. But I think that one of the reasons that I, I could knock them, and they could be knocked, is that they have these... Um, systems like retirement which is seemingly senseless because it's not coordinated it's not tidy at all but it's a system that is open to change because it is so uncoordinated and not across the board over in Europe where let's say retirement plans are coordinated to a much greater extent it would be very, very hard to change them because they're established across a great open field for a lot of people. But this is a lot more um, malleable. It can move and uh, dodge and dive with the times, which would be a great advantage for the United States, as would, let's say, its healthcare system, which again is not absolutely nailed down like the European ones are. I think it's an absolute horror show and a mess, but it is there, um, flexible, to move with the times. Pros and cons. Let's move on. Number of the week. Millions cut out with without unemployment extension. Again, United States, the number is 2,153,700. The number of jobless people currently receiving unemployment benefits who will lose them by February the 11th, 2012, if an extension isn't enacted by Congress by the end of the year. Again, um, it's, it's a very movable feast, this. They've put this in because they feel that they have to due to exceptional circumstances, but they're not required to, and they can drop it out if uh, the bobbing and weaving makes it necessary that they um, drop the payment of these um, employ unemployment extension benefits. Because when we get to the bottom, I've just highlighted in this one, the Congressional Budget Office estimates that it would cost around $44 billion to extend the benefits through 2012. Now, $44 billion is an awful lot of money. It's not compared to many of the figures that have been bandied around lately, but in the real world, $44 billion is a lot of money. So the American Congress has the ability to 
again, go two ways. They can duck and dive. They can say, yeah, the United States is good for this. There is absolutely no problem. We'll just run that up on the deficit, 44 billion, and we'll put that into the economy via the people, 44 billion. Or if they choose, they can say, we are not required to spend this. We'll stop it. We will not spend the 44 billion. Whereas in Europe, the restrictions are a lot stricter. They just can't arbitrarily um, decide to pay these things or not. Okay. A couple of examples of people thinking outside the box, outside the envelope, blue sky, oh, I don't know what it's called. But Matt Inglesias um, chats with these real economist types, uh, normally in ways that I can't understand what they're talking about, especially when they start using algebra in it but this is quite easy to understand martin feilstein Feil, F feldstein is putting mortgage modifications back on the table this is bloggers or um, people that do articles in newspapers talking among each other though with an initiative that dean baker says would entail leaving millions of homeowners as near indentured servants so this was the argument that's got on and matt Inglesias comes with, whenever I hear these debt relief concepts, I always step back. The logi logistically simplest and intuitively fairest form of economic stimulus is to hand out checks for a flat amount to all Americans. And again, this is, it's good thinking that these thoughts are being thought, that um, it's being discussed. I'll leave it at that because I'm going on a bit today. Right. And over in the UK, uh, Martin Wolf comes with a similar sort of thing highlighted there. It would be more effective if newly created money paid directly for government spending. The government could then spend, send £1,250 to each citizen resident in the United Kingdom. Again, it's, to my mind, representative of the fact that a lot of people are understanding that this crisis is of a magnitude that it needs um, quantum leap type thinking. But uh, this is the last link. I'll do my little but first. Most all of this thinking so far um, it by the expert types is what can we do, even if it's a quantum leap type thing, by getting huge checks and sending them in the post or whatever it might be? How can we get back to where we were? That's just about what all the thinking is. But um, all of these people, I think, are starting to get the rumblings that where we were has caused where we are. So going back to where we were will probably just cause another where we are, but in the future, if you get at what I mean. In other words, this, these great um, ideas for curing today so we can go back to the system of yesterday, they're probably wasting their time. But at least they are getting towards the thinking that the system of yesterday is, or at least could be, irrevocably broken only it's only a thought but that thought must be thunked right we'll finish with the economist here and roger pielke jr now if you read the article you'll understand why it's significant that it's written by roger pielke jr now what we have here is industrial commodity prices in real dollar terms 1845 to the present day with 1845, um, 50 equaling zero. We'll leave that out. But we can see that these are um, real um, leveled prices. So we can see whether industrial commodity, um, and industrial co commodities are costing the economy more or less. Now, there's, I, I'm putting this here because obviously I think there's a good chance that the answer to the reason, uh, the answer to the question of why yesterday's system is breaking could be here. I'm not saying it is, but it could be here. Industrial commodities. So 
what we've got 1845 is just about the time where oil started being sucked out of the ground on any sort of large scale and that scale just has increased from 1845 probably up to 2005. So we can see that the commodity industrial commodity prices were about flat all the way up to the certainly to the end of that century but what was happening is um, inventors entrepreneurs were inventing new ways of using this new product and distilling it into different ways that it can be used but uh, petroleum um, gas or go what do you call it whatever you call it in America um, trucks and all, all that sort of stuff were being invented to use the energy that was being taken out of the earth to find other energies and to do industrial things and to do all sorts of things. So the spike there in before 1920 uh, is First World War and then prices we can see start tending down all the way to the year 2000. Now I would say this what was happening here is that the industrial commodities were easier to get at by using industrial commodities that had been got at. We, put more simply, oil power could get industrial commodities out of the earth and processed and manufactured into new toys, things, everything that made the economy go and made more machinery to get more industrial commodities out of the earth and processed. It was a great circulating process but based on the fact that uh, industrial commodity oil was at the bottom of it all. But we've bounced off the ground in 2000 and the dip down was the Great Recession where people stopped you getting the industrial commodities out because things had all broken down. I'll just leave it simply there as the uh, just a, an open idea for over the peak that besides the money thing which could be caused by this as well this could be the reasoning why yesterday's system will never work again because the energy that we're getting out of the earth and using our brains to build machinery to get more industrial commodities out to process and to make the economies of the world run is just not um, cheap anymore because the major industrial commodity and energy source oil is not cheap anymore and the chances are it never will be again because the, the brains have been used on the energy that we've got now to find more energy and industrial commodities and it's just not cutting it anymore and this could be the end of what has been a hundred years of doing things one way and that is or perhaps was yesterday's way and there is no point coming up with the most paradigm shift brilliant schemes to go back to yesterday's way that's it bye